uh, is a story Keith told me yesterday when we were on the phone about Kobe Bryant. I know you mentioned the summer league before playing with Kobe D fish and those guys tell the audience about that story of when you coached Kobe and then, you know, a couple of days later or years later when he gave you that diss. Summer of 1995 going into my sophomore year in college. And, um, uh, I was on the coaching staff at the ABCD camp in Teaneck, New Jersey, Farley Dickinson University. All the college players were the coaches. And uh, on my team, I had Kobe Bryant, uh, Jim Thomas, Lester Earl, and Jermaine O'Neal. We were spanking everybody 30, 40, 50 points a game. My guys weren't breaking a sweat. So after the game, I would make them run sprints, you know, because it was just too easy. After one game, Kobe decides he doesn't want to run. He gets an attitude and walks off the court while the rest of the team is doing sprints. I say, hey, Bean, what's going on, man? You know, you hurt? What's happening? He says, man, I, I ain't got to run no more. I don't want to run. I don't want to run. You know, we just won, man. I'm, I'm not running. I said, look, man, you're making yourself look bad in front of all these people. Your teammates are out here, you know, running. But you think you're different. So I'm just trying to prepare you for college because these coaches, man, they throw different things at you and you got to be mentally tough. You know, his dad comes down from the stands and he says, uh, Coach Claus, what's the problem? I said, you know, Bean doesn't want to run. He said, oh, he doesn't. Why not? He says that he doesn't have to because we won. I said, oh, is that right? Hold on. He said, boy, commit. So Kobe gets up and walks over to him and his dad, you know, punches him in the chest, you know, slides him across the floor in front of a, a gym packed full of people. There's about a thousand people in there, you know, and um, he knocks the wind out of Kobe. Kobe's sitting there gasping for the air, you know, little tears coming down his cheek. And uh, he says, boy, don't you ever disrespect your coaches and don't you ever um, embarrass your family like this. He said, your coach is right. You know, these, these coaches, they do tell you some crazy stuff. And he's just trying to prepare you. I tell you all the time, and now you're hearing it from somebody else who don't want to listen. He said, now get up and get out there and run with everybody else. So Kobe got out there, you know, crying and finished his sprints. Fast forward two years later, now he's got a year over me. He's got the seniority because he just finished his rookie year, and now I'm the rookie. After a, a big win, we smacked somebody by like 25, 30 points, and we're walking off the court. And he says to me, hey, Rook, hit the line. I already knew what time it was. You know, I started laughing at him. I said, all right, you got me. You got me. And uh, he told me, he said, uh, go. So I just started running my sprints with a big smile on my face, just laughing the whole time, running as hard as I could, you know, because I knew what that was about. You know, it was, it was Kobe's revenge. You know what I mean? And it was just that lesson coming back to me about seniority. You know, um, our, our families were sitting together and my mom's trying to figure out what's going on. And you hear his mom and dad saying, boy, you ain't right for that. You ain't right. You know, and uh, I look over and they're explaining to my mom what happened, what was going on. She says, you ain't got to do my baby like that. Why you do my baby like that? You know, but it was all good, man. It was a great experience, a great time to be uh, to be alive and playing basketball. I got a chance to play with one of the greatest to ever do it. You can't handle the truth.